Hey everybody, I'm Corey Tadaro. I'm Senior Product Manager for Healthcare at Digital Asset. And as I do my work and work with our clients and colleagues um, in healthcare, the issue of distributed applications and regulatory compliance, specifically privacy compliance for medical and personal health information uh, is, is a crucial issue. How do we develop uh, distributed applications, multi-party applications, uh, that are also compliant to the, the privacy rules in different jurisdictions around the world uh, is, is a very important topic. It's also a very complex topic, so uh, this is not by any means exhaustive, uh, but I just wanted to point out a number of issues uh, that come up in, in these privacy regulations and how DAML, um, as, as a smart contracting language and a framework for developing uh, multi-party applications, addresses some of these issues. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is what these rules are. Um, you hear the phrase HIPAA, um, or if you're in the EU, you hear GDPR, the General Data Protection Rule, um, and, and you might be confused. Um, these, these are overarching um, regulations around consumer uh, and individual data privacy. Um, in healthcare uh, in the United States, uh, that's mostly around HIPAA and the HIPAA Security Rule, uh, which places specific responsibilities on those who uh, possess uh, or manage or use something called PHI, or personal, uh, personally, personal health information. This is information that can be used to identify you. It's got your, your personal identification in it, and it also has factors um, around uh, or information about your health condition, uh, the treatments you receive. Importantly, in the United States, that also includes financial information about your health care. Um, so, uh, for example, an insurance claim is personal health information uh, in the United States. And it outlines a series of standards um, and practices uh, that anyone who's running an application that touches PHI should, uh, should strive to meet. Likewise, in the, in the EU, uh, GDPR is a very broad consumer rule. Uh, and how it applies to healthcare, though, um, is, is somewhat unique um, or somewhat specific. Um, much less detailed than the overarching rule uh, for GDPR. And so I'm going to be talking about some of the factors uh, that come up as we design multi-party applications and how DAML helps you um, design and operate solutions uh, that are compliant. Um, so the first topic I want to talk about is consent. Uh, patient and individual consent uh, for sharing their personal health information sits at the heart of almost all uh, privacy uh, rules around healthcare. Um, now, in the United States, um, uh, your healthcare provider, i.e., your physician, um, the clinic, the hospital that you uh, receive care at, um, can do three things basically with your health information. They can use it to improve your treatment um, and make sure that you're getting the best treatment possible. Uh, they can use it for administration, administrative purposes. For example, they can say, hey, we've got a lot of patients who have a certain type of heart condition. We need to up our staff. Um, we need to make sure that we have people on call uh, for those kinds of conditions. And they can also use your personal health information uh, for financial purposes. Uh, in other words, for coordinating getting paid for delivering treatment to you. Um, and so those are the three broad areas. And, and when they do that work, they can also share that information with third party companies who help them achieve some of those three types of activities. So for example, they can hire a third party company who helps them put together medical claims. And, and for that purpose, they can share your, pers their, your personal health information with that third party company. But it requires that the individual give consent to that healthcare provider uh, in order to share that information. And of course, when you share that information, all these parties are liable uh, for breach. Um, if, if the personal health information gets out, if there's unauthorized access to that information, uh, it's crucial um, that, uh, that they may be held responsible and there are lots of regulatory um, sanctions and fines that can come to bear on anybody who, who uh, allows a breach for personal health information. But what's great about DAML in this situation is that DAML is a consent driven language by its very nature. DAML is of course a smart contracting language and a multi-party application framework, uh, but it enforces very basic rules that model um, almost one-to-one -one with some of the consent dynamics we see in healthcare. Uh, in DAML, for example, we always say you can never be put into an obligable position. You can never be a party to a contract without your consent. Uh, and so those basic dynamics in the DAML language can very easily be applied to healthcare such that we can track patient consent, um, we can uh, understand if it's active or if it's expired. Uh, and of course, 
um, no action can take place uh, or um, further application um, uh, function features can't come into play until consent is recorded on the ledger. And so I just wanted to point out how DAML is a very basic language fits the model of healthcare consent uh, and individual consent very well. Um, a second topic that often comes up is data minimization. Uh, if, we're, if we're handling very sensitive information, uh, and in fact, this is explicit in the GDPR rules, um, we need to minimize um, the, the, uh, the specific fields of information um, that we use. In other words, the rules state that you should use the minimal amount of personally identifiable health information uh, necessary to do the function that your, that your application is designed for. Um, so you don't want extra fields in there. You don't want extraneous personal, uh, personal health information that's not core to the very functions um, um, that your, your solution or your application is designed to achieve. Uh, what's great about, again, DAML in this instance uh, is the notion of subtransactional privacy. So when we think about multi-party applications and blockchain applications, uh, the question is one of transparency. All nodes in the system being operated by multiple parties can have a record of every transaction that goes through the system. And that poses a real problem um, for healthcare regulations in that there are parties on the network who may not be um, uh, privileged, uh, who should not have the privilege to see that personal health information. But with DAML, by contrast, we can control who sees what information. So uh, first, DAML allocates um, information about smart contracts specifically and only to the parties who are signatories or parties to that transaction. If you're not a party to a transaction in DAML, you have no access to the information contained in those transactions or those smart contracts. But we even go a step further in that we can create um, third party roles, observers, auditors, um, third parties who are not directly a stakeholder of the transaction, but who have been granted some specific right to see something. And it's that last phrase that's important because in DAML, we can enable observers to see only a portion of the transaction. So we can minimize the amount of information that's being shared with a third party who may not be privileged to see that personal health information. That way we can design data models um, that achieve and reach for the goal of data minimization or the minimal use of personal health information in your applications. Uh, the third topic I'd love to address uh, very quickly is that of encryption. And encryption is a very common topic, of course, in blockchain and distributed ledger. Uh, but I want to talk about something slightly different. Uh, and this is about basic application encryption. Um, so in GDPR and HIPAA, um, all transactions or all information that's being sh um, shared within the system needs to be encrypted. So we need encryption in transit, uh, we need encryption at rest when it's stored in the database, and all um, um, information that's shared between components of an application should also be encrypted. And this is where the DAML framework becomes really useful. Um, uh, we, DAML has a robust JSON API um, that allows us to, to write uh, applications that can talk to the ledger to exercise smart contracts. All of that is encrypted um, in SSL 1.3. Um, depending upon the ledger you use, encryption at rest is not difficult to achieve. And in fact, um, the kinds of databases and ledgers that are being offered by some of the large cloud providers that integrate well with DAML um, also offer HIPAA or high trust compliant versions of those data stores um, such that you can meet your uh, requirements to achieve data at rest there. Uh, but that brings up the final topic uh, that I'd love to quickly address, and that's uh, storage and the ledger. When, when blockchain first became an enterprise topic, uh, healthcare was very concerned that the, the transparent nature of the ledger between all of those parties uh, doesn't match the, the requirements uh, and the obligations of medical privacy. Um, and that, again, this is where um, uh, DAML strategy and um, DAML options become very important because DAML is fundamentally ledger agnostic. Um, in other words, when you write an application in DAML, you then pick um, the, the database, um, the blockchain, the distributed ledger uh, that integrates into DAML, uh, and you pick the one that best meets your requirements and your regulatory concerns. And so when you write a, um, a healthcare application in DAML, you're not restricted to only one type of data structure. You can actually um, use DAML on, on SQL database, a Postgres database, or you can write it on Hyperledger fabric. And the characteristics of that ledger, which stores the information, which stores the PHI, uh, is very 
important if you're seeking to write an application or a solution um, that is HIPAA compliant or GDPR compliant. And so my point here is that DAML gives you the choice and the ability um, to select the, the most compliant data platform necessary. And of course, as we write solutions, the decisions aren't purely our own. Um, ultimately, it's the appetite of our, of our end users. Uh, if that's a large healthcare enterprise, they certainly have uh, opinions on, on best practices for compliance. And so choosing DAML as your application framework for writing um, HIPAA and privacy compliant healthcare applications gives you um, the maximum freedom and, and the most flexibility to choose the, uh, to choose the underlying data store that best meets your obligations and the expectations of your customer base. And so that's just a couple of the topics that come up. I, again, it's a very deep and, and complex topic around privacy regulations, but I just want to emphasize that the choice of DAML uh, for writing your applications uh, gives you all the tools and components uh, that you might require to write uh, and to operate uh, a compliant solution in the healthcare space. Thanks for your time today and feel free to reach out to us on discuss.daml, um, our discussion forum um, for questions about how uh, DAML can help you um, write healthcare applications and solutions.